Welcome to the IT free training video on configuring Root Hint servers on Windows DNS Server. Root Hint servers are the first server contacted in order to start resolving a DNS request. On most networks, you will never need to configure the Root Hint servers. This video will help you understand how the Root Hint servers are configured in case you have a rare case in which you need to make changes. I will now change to my Windows 8 computer with remote administration tools installed to look at how to configure root hints in DNS for Windows Server. First of all, I will open Charms and go to the search option. To access DNS Manager directly, I will enter in dnsmanagement.msc in the search. Once DNS Manager has opened, I will enter in my DNS server, which in this case is NYDC1. Once DNS Manager has loaded, I will next right-click on NYDC1 and select the option Properties. Once the properties have opened, I will next select the tab Forwarders. Notice at the bottom is the tick box Use Root Hints if no forwarders are available. It is currently grayed out because no forwarders have been configured. To allow this option to be changed, I will press Edit and add a forwarder. In this case, I will use the IP address of Google's publicly available DNS server. Once I have entered in a forwarder, notice that now I can untick the tick box Use Root Hints if no forwarders are available. If the forwarder is not available, the DNS server will use the Root Hint server. But when would you want to use or disable this option? To understand why, consider a typical deployment. In this case, you have an internal DNS server. This DNS server forwards DNS queries to a DNS server on a perimeter or DMZ network. This server then forwards DNS queries to the ISP's DNS server. Let's consider what would happen if the DNS server on the DMZ were to become unavailable. If this were to occur, the internal DNS server would attempt to use the root hint server to start the DNS resolving process. So essentially what you now have happening is an internal DNS server that is not supposed to be directly communicating with the internet is now attempting to contact a root hint server on the internet. If it is able to do this, it will then start contacting other DNS servers on the internet attempting to resolve the DNS query. You can see why many administrators would consider this poor security and would switch off the ability for the DNS server to contact a root hint server. This of course would mean that while the perimeter DNS server is down, no internal clients would be able to resolve DNS requests, so the administrator would need to ensure that outages, if they occurred, were short. In this particular case, I will leave this tick box ticked and then move on to the Advanced tab. Notice at the top the option Disable Recursion also disables forwarders. This tick box, when ticked, will prevent the DNS server from contacting any other DNS server if it does not know the answer to the DNS query. It will not attempt to contact any root hint servers or forwarders even if these options are configured. You would most likely use this option on a secure network that is isolated from other networks. The only other time that you may want to enable this option is when you have multiple DNS servers and you only want particular DNS servers to resolve DNS requests and other DNS servers to ignore the request. If I select the next tab, Root Hints, this shows the 13 Root Hints servers that are configured. Due to a limitation of the UDP protocol when DNS was first developed, the maximum number of root hints servers is limited to 13. It should be pointed out that a root hint server is not one physical server. A root hints server is installed on a high availability cluster, and some of the root hints servers use Anycast, making them available from multiple locations. For this reason, your DNS server shouldn't have any trouble contacting at least one of the root hint servers considering their availability. The data for the root hint servers is stored in the Windows directory. To see this, I will open Windows Explorer and go to 
NYDC1 CDAR. Remember that I am using remote access tools to access the DNS server, so to access the C drive on NYDC1, I need to use the hidden administration share on that server. Next, I need to go to the Windows directory, System32, and then the directory, DNS. In this directory, there is a file called cache. If I open the file and scroll down through it, you will notice all the root hint servers defined in the file. I will now go back to the root hints tab. Notice the first root hints server starts with A. The last one ends in M. If I press edit, you can see the IP address for this root hints server. Notice that it is an IPv4 address. If I were to go through all the other root hint servers, they would all be IPv4 addresses. Just to prove a point, I will now remove all the root hint servers. I would not recommend that you do this on your production network. Once I press apply, the root hint servers will be removed. This DNS server will no longer be able to resolve any DNS queries unless a forwarder is configured or the DNS record asked for is stored on this DNS server. If I press the button copy from server, this will allow me to enter in an IP address of another DNS server which can be used to obtain a list of root hints servers. In this case, I will enter in the IP address of my ISP's DNS server. Notice that when I press OK, the root hints servers will be restored. If I edit the first root hints server, Notice that I now have an IPv6 address of the root hints server which previously was not present. For the most part, the root hints server addresses are static. However, as time goes on, you can see that new IP addresses are added to the list. Well, that covers it for root hints servers in Windows Server. Thanks for watching this free video from IT Free Training. Please check out our other free videos for the DNS courses and other courses. Till then, see you next time.